All right, welcome back for part two. So in the last video, we used a Dremel to install new power supply, 750 watts, definitely overkill, but you know, uh, it was cheap and it works to power this thing. So good, but we're not gonna be able to uh, take advantage of all that power, unfortunately. Now, one of the snags that we ran into in the first part of the video, and to be clear, it was unexpected, but part of these types of videos is that they are experiments and they're, you know, learning experiences. So you run into some snags, but you have to engineer a workaround. That's what we do. We're all engineers here. So I had to work on getting a graphics card that could fit into this thing. So the problem is that, number one, you see this big-ass CPU cooler. The idea, it, it's a pretty good idea. So the idea is that the, the way that this airflow works is that this has a big fan up here in the front, and it will bring in air and go through and exhaust at the back. And I believe there's, in the original system, this power supply has a fan in it too, but I believe in the original system, this fan on the CPU cooler is the only fan in the entire computer. Now, to be clear, the CPU that's running in here, I believe it operates at like 2.9 gigahertz, at least the original one. This one, the one that I upgraded in here does not. But the original one was like below 3 gigahertz. It was a dual core. And I believe the original power supply was 300 watts or 275, something like that. So it's not a very power-hungry system, at least the default configuration is not. So I can understand that, but um, we might want to uh, maybe... Later on, I don't have one on me right now, but eventually, might want to um, zip tie a fan back here for an exhaust, potentially. You can kind of see how big this, uh, kind of hard to see, but how like, chonky that um, uh, steel or aluminum block on that CPU is. Pretty, pretty huge, pretty overkill too, because this is a this is a Core 2 Quad Q6600 is what I upgraded it to. But anyway, like I was saying. We have to find a graphics card, but the problem is that the the clearance between the cooler and the steel case, this clearance, not very big. So it does not allow for a lot of uh, very long graphics cards. And then since this one PCIe slot only has a single slot on it, we're limited to short one slot cards. So we're very, very limited on what we can do. I tried to use like a PCI Express riser cable and maybe Dremel this out and maybe see if I could get something kind of hacky in there to kind of hack in like a graphics card with just a riser cable coming out of the PCI Express slot. The problem is that again, you can't get around the problem of this um, CPU cooler interfering with that, that stuff. I'm sure what we could do if we really wanted to, we could take out all this black plastic and we could replace the cooler with something better but at that point I would have to buy so many new parts and spend so much time and effort on this thing just trying to get that to work um, it's just not something that I'm willing to do for the sake of this project so uh, I ended up I just tested the system to see if it would post with a GTX 650 Ti last time uh, but for this time for this part I got this. This is an R7 250. I believe this is a, oh gosh, I think it's a two gigabyte card, I, I believe. I believe it's two gigabytes, although there are four gigabyte variants, but uh, this one cost, I think, 10 bucks. So, uh, but this is going to allow us to play some games, not a ton, but some. Um, I'm not expecting this to be uh, a huge performer, but mostly I just needed it because it has a display port port so that's going to allow us to connect to our monitor uh, so that's that's good that's what we needed the original uh, 3450 that came in here had one of those DMS 59 connectors uh, so that was limited us to either VGA or DVI which is what we did not want so this is going to be our GPU so then with the GPU new CPU got our RAM and our power supply we should be good to go. And I'm going to show you guys, once this is installed, uh, 
I'm going to take you through the Linux install process. All right. Toolless installation with this little bracket down here that just kind of clips in. And uh, we're good to go. So there you have it. Q6600 R7250. So I'm going to close this thing up, see if we get a post, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we have a post on the, uh, on the screen. Uh, Got to put a keyboard on there, but um, I have one, so that's not a problem. Uh, and then I have a boot media here. Currently, we have an SSD and two hard drives in here. Neither of them have an operating, none of them have an operating system on them, but this USB drive does. So this is what we will be using to put Linux on there. So I'm gonna just plug that into the system. Okay, and then I got the dongle connected. Mouse is on, keyboard is on. I think we should be good. So let's go for an F1. Wait, what? No boot device, okay. Control, delete. Huh, F2, okay. We'll go into setup. All right, actually, this is actually pretty good. What we can do is, with the setup, we can actually make sure all of our stuff is being detected. Um, so that's gonna be useful. The next day. Okay, so this took a while, but eventually I was able to get this booted up and uh, working. Uh, for some reason, I, I had it Linux Mint installed on a um, another USB, but for some reason, I don't know if it was, it was Gen 2 or something, but it was just taking forever, so. I got it on a USB 3 uh, thumb drive, and let's go ahead and um, go through the install process. I think I said in the last video I was going to use Ubuntu, I'm using Linux Mint. Um, the desktop environment, Cinnamon, is going to be better for the lower hardware resources that we have to work with. Whereas GNOME, which is what Ubuntu uses, is a little bit heavy compared to Linux Mint. So um, we're going to go with English. And I, I do expect this to take a while. But yeah, it, it's very weird how slow this is. Like I've run operating systems on USBs before, and it's not nearly this bad. So we're going to go for USA English. And then I want to make sure that the drives that I want to install this on are showing up properly. That's important. So I should have three drives that go in here. We do want to install multimedia codecs. Um, and then this is the version of Linux Mint. I think there are two. There's one that's based on Debian and one based on Ubuntu. This is the Ubuntu based one. The installer following disks have mounted partitions. Um, yeah, we just need to get rid of everything. All right. So this is the one that's going to be based on Ubuntu, and that's just going to allow for some more compatibility. And then in an upcoming video, I'm going to show you how to update the drivers uh, on Ubuntu-based systems so that you can use older AMD graphics cards. So if you have an, a graphics card before the RX 500 series, uh, you'll be able to get the drivers that will allow you to play some games on it just in case you have an old one. I know that that is kind of, um, that is kind of going a little bit far back, but there are still a lot of people that have graphics cards from those eras, and I want to make sure that I can help them because I was trying to, um, I was trying to play games on, on one of those old cards for a while back, and it was uh, not fun for me. So we're gonna to want to erase the disk and install Linux Mint. So, okay, so let's make sure, okay, great. So this is awesome. So look at this, all three of our drives are appearing right here, okay? So we have our Kingston SSD, that's what we're gonna install on, but we also have our, th our th uh, 320 gig hard drive and our 640 gig hard drive. But the 240 gig SSD is what we're going to want to install Linux Mint on. So let's go ahead and go for the install. And then I think we just kind of let it happen, essentially. Oh, this will take a while. I'm just going to cut to when this starts doing its thing.
All right, finally got it done. So, got uh, got everything finished up. So we should be uh, we should be good to go here. So we got Linux Mint installed. Oh come on, don't seize up on me now. It's um taking a minute, but it's it's running, so we're good there. Um, yeah. So that's going to basically conclude this uh, video. So I showed you in the first video, we installed a new power supply um, and we attempted to install a graphics card. That did not end up working. But um, in this video, we got the new graphics card installed and we got a brand new operating system up and running. So we're gonna be running Linux Mint on this thing. So that's pretty cool. Um, I might show some gaming performance later on. Um, the next video that I want to actually make with this thing is showing you um, how to update the old AMD drivers so that they'll work with the uh, older cards and actually play games with them. Because uh, that's an issue that I ran into on, on Linux with uh, an older AMD card, so I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but yeah, that's going to conclude this part two. So yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully it was at least a little bit of entertaining watching me go through the hell of installing a new uh, Linux distro. So yeah, uh, but thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.